All right, Nick, let's talk about some Texas A&M football. There's some exciting news going on down here. I think the Aggies have a lot of really great recruits this season. But I think when we think about 2023, it's going to be a good year, but 2024 could be even better. And the story we have today is proof of why that is. Yeah, Miles, it was one of the concerns. It's obviously, could Jimbo Fisher and company keep their recruiting pipeline strong in a and But based on this later report, it looks like it will continue to be strong. A little teaser here at the most important position on the field. But before we get into that report, got a question for you Aggie fans to answer in the comment section below. Who is the greatest quarterback in team history? There's a lot of very interesting names, some recent names, some names from the past. But we're going to leave it open to you. Give us your favorite or the best quarterback in Texas A&M history in the comment section below. But all right, Miles, what you got? What's the latest out of A&M? Yeah, Nick, you brought it up a little bit, a teaser in the beginning. We're talking about the quarterback position today. And the Texas A&M Aggies have gotten a really, really nice quarterback prospect in the 2024 class. Let's go on to the tweet here. This is from Hayes Fawcett over on on three sports on Twitter. Really great follow if you want breaking uh, college football recruiting news. So it says class of 2024 QB Miles O'Neill tells me he has committed to Texas A&M. And here's a key part here, Nick, the six foot five, 220 pound running back. No, that's a quarterback from Princeton, New Jersey, chose the Aggies over Michigan State, Penn State and Pitt. He is the second QB in the Aggies 2024 class, joining Anthony Maddox. Nick, I alluded to it. This guy's an absolute beast. He is the huge physical size, six foot five, has the size on him, uh, 220 pounds. This guy looks very, very special. I think that he could be a guy to help solidify that quarterback position because we all know AM had some very bad quarterback troubles last season going through multiple, multiple injuries, cycling guys in and out. You never knew. I think those are very solid team last year. It's just the level of quarterback play hindered them tremendously. If they could have got it under wraps, they would have been good. You you notice it mostly in the South Carolina game. It kind of just really, it was really dismal. They had a lot of great plays, but they just couldn't pull it all together. So I, I think this is a huge part, like you said, Opening the the recruiting pipelines, keeping, even though there's some turmoil early on, Jimbo Fisher has the recruits coming in, and he's getting them all the way from Princeton, New Jersey, as it said in the tweet. This is really big news for Texas A&M. Nick, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this? What does this mean for the Aggies? So there's two parts of this I really like. One, this is Bobby Petrino doing. He recruited Anthony Mannix, the quarterback, the other quarterback prospect from the 2024 class who has committed to Texas A&M. Uh, it was brought up by the report, but he also recruited this kid too. He recruited O'Neill as well. And to me, that's a big part of why you bring Bobby Petrino in. Look, he's obviously a great offensive coordinator, great play caller, great schemer, all that kind of stuff, but he's also a pretty darn good recruiter as well. So I really like the fact that uh, Petrino is sticking to it in terms of the recruiting department, bringing in quality guys in terms of both Maddox and O'Neill. But I want to just highlight the differences between the two. I think this makes it really smart here. And this is a credit to Texas a and Jimbo Fisher, Petrino, just the recruiting strategy. Sometimes what teams do, they just go after one certain style of quarterback and they don't deviate at all. And that sometimes has a lot of risk because depending on the other players you have on the team at that time, and sometimes the competition, you want to have multiple styles at quarterback competing and out to figure out what direction you want to go so anthony mannix is smaller he's six one about 165 170 but he's a freak athlete he's got a great arm can do a lot of things but he's just a special kind of athlete o'neill's the exact opposite he's the classic pro style guy the guy looks like peyton manning out there six five two twenty in high school like he looks like he could be you know being drafted in the nfl right now he's a good athlete but not nearly the level of athlete as mannix and i think having both of these guys in the 2024 class duking it out for playing time for the next couple of years will set A&M up for success. It will allow them to pick whichever option is best for their team based on the talent they currently have on the roster at that time. And obviously, Bobby Petrino has had a lot of success with very mobile quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson's most, fam- most famous example, but he's had success with quarterbacks who are a little bit more stationary. How about Teddy Bridgewater is another good example of that as well. Bobby Petrino knows how to adjust his offense to the talent of the quarterbacks. So Petrino, Jimbo Fisher and company focusing on just getting talented quarterbacks in is the smart move to make. So credit to A&M for understanding that's what they need to do and going out and doing it because we talk about it all the time college football becoming more and more like nfl you have to be good at quarterback and m fans will know that you brought it up in the opening half mice if you're not good at quarterback if you're not consistent at quarterback nothing else matters and the fact that AM recognizes that and, and is doing everything they can to continue to recruit that position at a high level is a great sign for the long-term health of this program 